We're going to write a shift cipher application in under 15 minutes and this is a way to take a plain text value, shift all the characters by a certain amount and output it as a cipher text. You can see that this cipher text uh, field here is not editable because we don't want the user to be able to type in there. I have a message area down at the bottom which will be where we'll place any error messages. I also have used a tooltip here on the um, uh, shift field which tells the user to enter an integer value if they cursor over it. That's better than typing right into that field with the instructions because the tooltip is always around and doesn't disappear if uh, the user has typed in something to replace it. So let's go and uh, work on our shift button action performed um, event method which I've already uh, created and I'm going to just paste in our pseudocode that we had uh, from the PDF file in the course and actually I'm going to move well, I guess I can do this all at once. Eh? I'm going to move these over a little further because I see that w one of the things that might happen is we might get a, a, an error of some sort as we try to do this. We're going to use a try catch block to uh, handle those things. So I'm going to just put the try catch block in right away and uh, the f I'm going to have two types of exceptions. The, f the second type is going to be the basic uh, general exception, which we'll deal with in a second. Okay, let's uh, get cracking here. The first thing we're going to do is get our plain text string from the user, and we do that by accessing the plain text field, and we'll call the get text method on it. And that little subprogram is going to give us a string, which uh, is uh, held in that uh, GUI component. And the other thing we're going to do is uh, get the shift amount and we'll do that by accessing the shift field but we're going to use again the integer dot parse int method which takes a string and it will be the shift field dot get text method that gives us that string. Okay so this line here 116 this could throw a number format exception so I want to catch that kind first that more specific number format exception uh, and I'll call it NFE, I suppose. And in there, this is what's going to happen when we have something that is not an integer. And when that error occurs, I want to do two things. One is I want to set the message label so, uh, to let the user know what happened. Set text. Please enter an integer value for the shift. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to clear out the existing ciphertext. You can imagine that the user might have successfully entered something and then made a mistake the second time around. I don't want the old ciphertext to hang out there anymore. Another option is that this line, ciphertext field dot set text, maybe I'll do that. You could put it right at the beginning here to clear out any uh, remove existing cipher text. That way uh, it won't be it won't be there still if if the user makes a mistake. Now the other problem might come when we have a um, uh, special characters that we aren't able to handle in the plain text. And when that happens we're going to do something similar except the message is going to be something like please enter uh, plain text message with no special characters. Okay, so um, how are we going to get to this? How are we going to have this exception occur? Because right now we have this fancy parse int method that might throw the number format exception problem, uh, but we don't have any way for the to, to check the plain text right now. So let's make that happen. Um, how can I do this? Hmm. Well I could write some code right in here or I could write a little method which this is what I think we're gonna do. Uh, check for special characters and that method is gonna need the plain text value to work from. Okay so it's going to check for that. If it has a problem, we're going to make it throw an exception, which will be caught down here, and we'll end the method. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, then we're going to actually shift the message string to produce the encrypted string. So I'm going to need a new string variable, which I'll call ciphertext. And hmm, 
Again, there's a bunch of code that has to happen here, so I'm going to write another little subprogram that's going to complete this for me. Uh, we're going to call it uh, Shift Cipher, and I'm going to give it two values, plain text, and I'm going to also give it the shift amount so that it, those are the two things it's going to need to work. So this method also doesn't exist. You can see the error cannot find symbol. It doesn't exist yet and it's going to produce a string that we're going to stick in there and then we're going to output that. Uh, we're going to output it by calling this method cipher text field dot set text to cipher text. Okay. So this is all the logic that we worked out in our pseudocode, but two pieces of this are more complicated algorithms that we're going to write separately now. So I need to write this method here, check for special characters, it has to throw an exception, and it takes a string variable uh, for input. as a parameter is what we call it. And so that is going to be a private void method. It's called check for special characters, and it's going to take a string, and I'm going to call the string s, Inside of this method, the s is going to be the string variable. It doesn't matter what it was called up here. Um, I can't even see the variables and so on up here anymore. I can only see the string value itself. So let's see how I'm going to check this. Um, I'm going to go through every character in the string and check to see if it has a problem. If it does, I'm going to throw an exception. So uh, for each, <laughs> for int i equals zero i less than s dot length and this is not an array it's a string so I have to use the method length and each time through I'm going to increment by one and for each time through I'm going to check if s dot character at i is less than 32 this will grab the ASCII value and see if it's less than 32 or if uh, the character at i is greater than 126. If either of those things happen, I'm going to throw a new exception. And you're going to get an error right here. Oh, here it is. Here's the error. It's going to say there's an unreported exception, and it has to be caught. I need a try catch block, or it has to be thrown. And I'm going to th say that this method throws an exception. That's how we want to handle it, right? So. If there's a problem, we're going to get an exception. Otherwise, this method completes and nothing happens, which is great. Now, let's deal with the uh, cipher text method. So we're going to make a new shift cipher method. This one is also private. See, private because nothing outside of this class is going to need to access it. But this one's not void. It produces a string. That's the return type right there. Shift cipher is the name of the method. And it takes two parameters, a string, which I'll call p, the plain text, and uh, an int s for the shift amount. Now I'm doing this on purpose here. I could have used the string, I could have called it plain text or anything else. It doesn't matter what I call it, it doesn't ever refer to the same variable name as what I have up here. And this int s is not the same s as this string s that I used before. These are local variables. This is beautiful because I can give this method to somebody else to write and they can use any variable names they want. It really doesn't matter. So let's do the shifting now. Um, I have some pseudocode that we talked about before in the PDF file. Here it is. And let me do this again. I'm going to con first I'm going to make a, an array of characters out of my string because the array is easier to deal with. So I'm going to call that the plain text array is going to be p dot uh, two character array. There it is. That's just a method in the string class that's very very helpful. Um, and I'm going to make another one for the cipher text. So cipher text array. And that one is going to be a new character array with the same size. So pt array dot length. And that's an array. So that's not a not a method is just a field. So now I've got my, uh, my array of characters and I have my uh, sort of empty array of characters. And let me just uh, make this a little more readable here. For each character in the plain text array, I'm going to shift it and I'm going to stick it in the new array. All right, that's a little bit challenging, but we're going to use a for loop to do that. For i equals uh, 0 is where we're starting. And once again, that's a different i than the one up here. These are local variables. They go away. I need to say that that's an int. i is going to be less than the length of the array. 
I plus plus. Okay, for each time through, I'm going to grab the ASCII value. So I'm going to make an int called ASCII, and it's going to be equal to PT array at I. That's actually enough right there. That will grab the value. One thing I can do to be very careful, though, is cast, uh, sorry, not char, cast the value of that um, character into an int, stuff it into an int variable. Um, it's not necessary because ints are, there are sort of more ints than there are um, character values. The int value um, has, has uses up more bytes in memory basically, so there's no loss of information to go from a character to an int, but I'll do the casting anyway. And then I need to do the shifting part. This is a little bit complicated, but what I'm going to do is sort of subtract 32 from the value here. So, for example, if, if 32, if the character was sp the space character, it would have value 32. I'm going to subtract 32 from whatever this value is. That'll sort of drop it down to zero. I'm going to shift it, do some mod arithmetic, and then I'm going to shift it back up after I'm done. So, shifting back up after I'm done is uh, 32 plus, or I can do that at the end. Maybe I will. Let's do that at the end. So, in brackets, I'm going to take. Um, the original ASCII value, I'm going to subtract 32, I'm going to add the shift, whichever, it could be a negative shift too, that's fine, oh the shift I called S, right? I'm going to take the whole thing mod 95, so that'll give me a value between 0 and 94, and to that I'm going to add 32, which gives me a value between 32 and 126, that's the new ASCII value, and then I'm going to make a new character for that, uh, and stick it into the CT array, so CT array at i equals, this is where I have to do the casting, cast into a character that ASCII value. All right, we're almost done. So that for loop is going to go through and convert everything into uh, the new characters, and then I'm going to stick that into a string and return it. Uh, so string c for ciphertext is a new string, and I'm going to get that from the ct array and I'm going to return that value C. All right, I didn't do any documentation here. I wanted to show you how that works. Slash star star and press enter. All the parameters get filled in here and you have a place to do your Java doc. Slash star star, enter, fill in all that stuff and we're a little short on time to do that today. Uh, but you need to do that for your own for your own programs anytime you write a method like that, a sub program. So let's see how I did. I've got all of these steps in here which I filled in first. I have my error checking here, and I have the actual shifting. Let's try it. Okay, here's our method, or sorry, here's our application. Let's try a plain text string. We'll take apple and we'll shift it by two. C R R N G. That sounds good. What if I shift it by twenty? What if I shift it by ninety-five? Hey, that brings it back around like it's supposed to. I can use a negative value. What if I try typing in some special characters, something weird? Mm, I can't think of any offhand. How about that? Hey, look, I got an error and my ciphertext was deleted too. That's great. And let's try shifting by something bad like cat. Enter an integer value for the shift. Perfect. That's great. And this ciphertext here, I should be able to shift something. See, I shifted by 5. I'm going to paste that value here and shift it by negative 5, and I should get cat back. And I do. Perfect. Everything's working very well. So I guess I did have time for documentation. I suppose I should have done that up here. So what did we learn? We have um, used our pseudocode to fill in sort of the important parts of our main, um, the most important method. We used a try catch block with two different catches to catch two different types of errors. We have two sub programs here one which was void and threw an exception which is new and another one which um, uh, doesn't throw an exception but does have a return value and had some pretty complex stuff in it so hey you did pretty awesome I'm very proud and uh, hopefully that's uh, clear enough for you if it's not please please ask me questions and use the discussion area in the course to get some help thanks a lot